So, tonsillitis is again a very important area which we will like to discuss. Some of the common medicines which will be indicated for tonsillitis I will be sharing with you. The first and foremost obviously amongst them is belladonna, medicine number 4 in this list. Page 28. Belladonna, few interesting things. We have talked about Belladonna quite a lot today. One of the few important aspects of Belladonna is the vermilion redness. Farrington in his clinical Metromedica mentions that your Belladonna has got the vermilion red color of the tonsils. Right? Vermilion redness. Quite bright red in case of Belladonna. Which sided again? Right sided. What is the feeling the Belladonna will tell you? Throbbing, congestion, right? Better by warmth or cold? Warmth makes them better, right? Belladonna, hypersulf, silica, all tonsils are better by warmth, right? Belladonna, hypersulf, silica. Are you with me? Tonsils better by warmth. Amelioration from warmth is important. So, if you see in the prescribing tips, tonsils swollen, inflamed of a bright red color. That's important for your belladonna. More right sided. They can have an aggravation from swallowing liquids. Liquids aggravate for belladonna. They have, belladonna can have a fear of water as well as they can have an aggravation from drinking any kind of liquids. So, liquids always aggravate for belladonna. Modality, as I shared with you, aggravation swallowing liquids better by warmth. So, that's important for your belladonna. Aggravation swallowing liquids and better from warmth. If you look in the handout, I have mentioned appearance bright red, congested appearance, bright red or vermilion red, that is the word. Aggravation swallowing liquids, I have mentioned that to you. What is the sensation? Throbbing sensation, a heat sensation, that is important. Right sided aggravation. And if you see here, I have mentioned Belladonna vermilion bright red appearance, Farrington in his clinical Metromedica mentions that with throbbing and congestion, that is another important thing vermilion redness with a lot of throbbing and congestion. Right. So, Belladonna obviously in the first stage of tonsillitis, you are it is indicated. Right. And there is no suppuration. Remember that is another basic difference with hypersulf. Hypersulf when the suppurative process has started, Belladonna there is no no, no pus at all. So, somebody who has a right sided tonsillitis is throbbing, it is congested, he will tell you I, whenever I swallow liquids it I, I pains me and I take something warm, a warm drink, I do a warm gurgle, it makes me better and I touch it, I feel pain, sensitive, right. I think, do not think sensitive is mentioned here, but you can add there sensitive, yeah, sensitive below bottom triangle, sensitive to touch, that is important. So, that is about your belladonna. So, the patient did not get belladonna, that state continued for quite a long time and then comes the stage of hypersulf. What is the stage of hypersulf? The pathology has progressed a little bit, it has gone to the next stage where there is little bit of pus points in the tonsils. So, it is not so prominent in this picture, but you will get a lot of pus points in the tonsils in hypersulf. And the typical sensation of hypersulf, it changes from the throbbing of belladonna, it now goes to the splinter like sensation, something is sticking in my throat, your hypersulf will tell you, a sticking sensation in the throat. If you see, I mentioned a fish bone sensation, that is important, right fish bone as well. So, fish bone sensation is very typical, something is sticking in my throat that hypersulf will tell you. Very, very sensitive again, sensitive to two things, remember Nash mentions this in his book, hypersulf is sensitive to three things, touch, pain and cold air. Nash mentions this that hypersulf is sensitive to three greatest things, 
touch pain and cold air so touch can't touch my tonsil can't touch my throat pain can't feel bear that pain cold air keeper self always wants the doors and windows closed you can feel the air even if the window is opened in the next room so very very sensitive to touch very very sensitive to pain and very sensitive to cold air and you see the suppurative process has begun i mentioned i mentioned this in the in the slide if you have a look sticking lancinating pains with throbbing and rigor and chill indicated the beginning of suppuration so hyper salt stage is always when the pus has started to form so it's one step ahead of belladonna pus has just formed and is very sensitive to touch to pain to cold air always better by warmth in hyper salt you with me so similar to belladonna because it has a sensitiveness like belladonna it has a better by warmth like belladonna but if you understand the pathology it's completely different belladonna is more like a throbbing congestive pathology whereas hyper salt is more like a suppurative pathology right so one step ahead and any smell from the tonsil what will be the smell sour. sour rotten cheese smell sour smell like rotten cheese if you see in the handout i mentioned fish bone sensation very sensitive there can be suppuration aggravation cold better by warmth that's important and sometimes if you recall in hyper self i shared with you earlier on they can have this like a strangling cough somebody is choking their throat no other medicine in the entire metro medical will tell you this that somebody is strangulating me somebody is strangling me and that is only shared to you by hyper self strangling choking cough like, <coughs> i can't breathe so that kind of a strangling cough is very important for your hyper Ch choking strangling strangling is somebody is throttling you you know strangling cough it's like the respiratory passage is having a spasm so somebody is throttling you from the outside because of the spasm that's important for your hyper and you see i mentioned the suppuration abscess quinzy quinzy is the suppurative tonsillitis on the name for suppuration in the tonsils quinzy so that's about your hyper self so the first stage of the stage of belladonna second stage is the stage of hyper self and now i take you further to the stage of silica so patient didn't get any medicine in the belladonna stage didn't get any medicine in the hyper stage unfortunately they present to you with the unfortunate silica tonsillitis stage if it, there's a very good clear picture of silica if you look at this picture because you'll see there's a lot of pus in the tonsils pus in the tonsils you'll have the same splinter like sensation which you have with hyper self but in case of the stage of silica you don't have the sensitiveness of hyper self you remember hyper self very sensitive to touch to very sensitive to pain but now the sensitiveness is gone you see how the amount of pus here amount of pus here in the tonsil it's just full of pus very bad smell it's now offensive smell which is coming out hyper self was a sourish smell which was coming out now the silica stage is a very bad offensive cadaverous smell which is coming out from the tonsil right so hip silica is a stage where you have the pus in the tonsils with a splinter like pain again silica can be better by warmth as well but what you don't have is you don't have the sensitiveness of hyper self you with me so what is common suppuration in the tonsil is common but only again silica is another step further it's more pus in the tonsil hyper self is just a pus point has appeared whereas in case of silica it's more pus in the tonsil number 2 what is common both have the splinter like sensation number 3 what is common both are better by warmth but what is present in hyper is the sensitive <gasps> can't touch it so sensitive but in silica the sensitiveness is not there so that's the difference between hyper and silica and hyper and silica follow each other really well so one can be indicated after the other this is not just for tonsils any suppurative process anywhere this three medicines are indicated one after the other belladonna hyper self and silica sometimes mercury can come up in between 
but this is the generally the state. Two differences again, you do not have the sensitiveness of HEPA in silica and you have very bad smelling discharge in silica whereas in HEPA it was more sour and more rotten cheese, old cheese smell in case of HEPA sulf. You see ap appearance it is indicated after HEPA when the abscess has discharged was refuses to heal. So, it is talking about skin, but even in case of tonsil, it is now the suppurative process is going on for long and he has a lot of pus in the tonsils, given strong antibiotics, but still not healing. And there you give silica to make them heal. Two differences again, not better, not sensitive and very, 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 very offensive in case of silica. If you see here in silica, I have mentioned after heaper, that is one of the important points. After heaper, pus discharging, pus is discharging. Cold hugs the fire, they are chilly. But you see, fetal odis, fetal odis is very bad smell. So, offensiveness comes in for silica, which you do not have with heaper stuff. Fetal odis is bad breath. right and sometimes silica whenever it is a silica stage you know because there is so much suppuration and so much infection is there they become weak debilitated you know lack of stamina lack of grit those things will come in for silica as well even an acute stage like a tonsillitis has been there for two weeks there is so much suppuration and infection that they have become debilitated as well in silica you will find that hyper we do not have weakness And the very important medicine for an acute tonsillitis prescription is phytolacca. Again, a very good picture to understand phytolacca. If you see here, two things why it is phytolacca, three in fact. You see the amount of pus in the tonsils that is suppurative, that is syphilitic, and phytolacca is a leading syphilitic medicine. Number two, you see the, the enlargement of the uvula, the soft palate is hugely enlarged, it is almost dropsical that you have with phytolacca as well. And you see here, what is this? What is this? Stringy saliva. And any stringy discharge, my friends, is always, always, always what? Syphilitic, yes. Any stringy discharge is syphilitic. Calibi bichromicum, stringy. Phytolacca has stringy. So, the stringy discharge is always syphilitic. Phytolacca is one of the fantastic medicines for sore throat, right? If you think in terms of location, sensation, and modality, what is the location? Again, right sided. But look here, please. Phytolacca, sore throat, whenever they straight it goes to the ear. So, pain always radiates from throat to the ear. That is one of the gem indications phytolacca, migratory throat to ear. If you think of the sensation, what is the sensation? A typical hot cold sensation. Every phytolacca tonsillitis patient will tell you this, that I feel like burning hot coals in my throat. You know, like somebody has put on a barbecue in your throat. It is like a hot cold sensation in the throat, burning coals in the throat burning syphilitic you are with me it's a hot cold sensation in the throat and thirdly if you think of the modality any tonsillitis patient will tell you that whenever i have pain in my tonsil i do some warm water gurgle i feel better but you give that same water to phytolacca he will die because that warm water aggravates for phytolacca a phytolacca tonsillitis is always worse from warmth they cannot drink any hot drinks I want you to have a look in Boric, please. Have a quick look in Boric for phytolacca. So, right sided tonsillitis shoots to the ear. The burning sensation is a hot, cold sensation. Everything is mentioned in the throat section. And 
they are always, always, always worse from warm drinks. Anything hot, fluid they have, they are always worse from that. Got it? Shooting pain into the ear on swallowing, yes. And you see, cannot drink anything hot, second or last line in throat section. Cannot swallow anything hot, very important PQRS. They are not necessarily better by cold, but hot drinks always aggravates the phytolacca throat because there is a constant burning sensation. It is a hot cold sensation in the throat. Did you get that hot cold sensation? I think in Allen's or Borike, both, I do not remember hot coal sensation as a burning hot coals in the throat probably in Allen's then hot coal sensation in the throat that is very very particular for phytolacca and the appearance of phytolacca sometimes if you see I have mentioned can be like lachesis dark red or bluish red or even purple I think Borike should mention that like purple purplish appearance of the throat. Dark, dark red or purplish red. Dark red or purplish red. So, throat can be, the appearance can be sometimes quite near lachesis because of the purplish appearance. Can, you know, dark and purplish. You got that? If you see, I have mentioned in, in here in the slide, burning is so great that it seems a red hot coal or iron is being placed. You got that in Allen's? red hot coal or iron is being placed. Have a look in Allen's. Red hot coal or iron is being placed in the throat. So, that kind of burning in the throat you will get with phytolacca. What? In the throat? Coal on fire or red hot iron in the throat. That is the typical feeling. Like it's a burning, like as I shared with you, it's a barbecue going on in my throat. Right? So that's about your phytolacca. In this picture, again, you have the pus in the tonsil. So, if it is a pussy tonsil, you, it will be this appearance with very enlarged uvula. That is mentioned Allen's as well. Have a look. Uvula is enlarged dropsical, something like that. So, very enlarged uvula. Enlarged? Dropsical. So much enlarged uvula with the pus and with the stringy saliva. Stringy is also important. You with me? I think stringy also mentioned Borike, is not it? Stringy is mentioned, yeah. So, you have the stringy nature, you have the enlarged uvula and you have the pus in the tonsil. If there is no pus, then it will be a bluish purplish appearance, a purplish appearance on the tonsil, if there is no pus. But phytolacca is an excellent medicine for sore throat. I shared with you right sided sore throat which radiates to the ear. I shared with you the burning hot cold sensation. And I shared with you the aggravation from warm drinks. Cannot swallow anything hot. If you look at the sore throat, if you look and diagnose, it will be pus, it will be stringy saliva, it will be swollen uvula. Or it can be a purple appearance of the throat. You are with me? So, those are important aspects for a phytolacca prescription. You can use potency internally, also phytolacca works very well in tincture as a local for gurgle.
thirty C internally and tincture locally. So that's about your phytolacca. We come to a very interesting tonsil again, calcadia iod. It can be prescribed even in acute cases if you have this typical tonsil. Look at the bottom picture, honeycombed appearance of the tonsil, honeycombed appearance of crypts in the tonsil. There is a wonderful book, you know that Bhanja, right? Therapeutics of Bhanja. And there he mentions about honeycombed appearance in the tonsils is very, very specific for calcite before. honeycombed appearance of the tonsil. You have calcaid, right? After that, after belladonna, I think. Yeah, honeycombed appearance of crypts in the tonsils. Very, very specific for calcaid. Crypts in the tonsils, so honeycombed appearance of the tonsils. Very specific for calcaid. If you go to the handout, if you go to the handout, medicine number five, crypts in the tonsils, honeycombed appearance of the tonsils. Sweaty head, you know that for calcarea, tall, slender or fat, flabby. Tall, slender, why? Iodum, yes. And calcarea is a fatty, flabby. Yeah. In what type of conditions? Calcarea can be tall. No, calcarea carb. Can calcarea carb be slim? No? <laughs> yeah, correct. Can be in respiratory diseases. You see, have a look in Allen's and Cal carb. Tall, slender, rapidly growing youth in respiratory conditions. Calcarea carb can be <laughs> slim even in if they have a recurrent respiratory problems. Before that, <laughs> chubby, yeah, you can say that. I got that? Third page on the top. Third page on the top. Yeah, lung diseases of tall, slender, rapidly growing you. Rap tall and slender means slim. Right lung involved. Calcadia carb is can be slim. Calcadia iod has the crypts in the tonsil. Okay. Ostrearum is the same as calcadia carb. 
they know that yes. calcarea in borike the medicine name is calcarea carbonica is the same medicine okay so that's about your calc iod L crypts in the tonsils honeycomb appearance of the tonsils in a flabby calcarea or in a emaciated iodum constitution that's about your calc iod one more medicine which is very important in this list and which we haven't discussed in the undergrad is Aelenthus glandulosa. A num medicine number one, Aelenthus glandulosa. Aelenthus is a medicine for what we call as kissing tonsils. There is huge, huge enlargement of the tonsils. Sometimes the tonsils are so enlarged that they almost give a nice kiss to each other. And that's your Aelenthus glandulosa, kissing tonsils, huge, huge swelling. You see the name of the medicine is glandulosa. So therefore, it is a medicine for glandular conditions and huge, huge swelling of the tonsils. Right? Well selected medicine fails for tonsillitis, try Aelanthus if there is huge enlargement. So much enlargement that they are almost touching each other, they are almost kissing each other and the patient can hardly breathe. Right? So swelling is very, very prominent for Aelanthus. Two, two things in the background for Aelanthus. You can have a low grade fever and you can have debility. So the lingering fevers, so like think of a strep throat, a streptococcal infections, there is a lingering fever, along with that there is weakness. If you look in Borike for Aelanthus, you will see it is mentioned, it is mentioned streptococcal infections for Aelanthus. Have a quick look in Borike for Aelanthus, you will see it is mentioned about streptococcal infections. So weakness can be there and low grade fevers can be there but the gem indication is that huge enlargement of the tonsils it's almost as if they are kissing each other and that's the alenthus tonsillitis You see this picture, this is mentioned for APIs, but there is so much swelling, you can hardly see anything in the back. That kind of tonsil you have with a lenthus, kissing tonsillitis. A I L A N T H U S, a lenthus glandulosa. Did you get that streptococcal infections? That you will find with a lenthus. Really good medicine when well selected medicine fails for tonsillitis, it can help reduce that huge enlargement. Even I have prescribed for adults, 25, 30 year old, having that kind of huge tonsillitis. Sometimes it can be no pain at all. Sometimes they can be just slight discomfort. It is not necessarily it has to be lot of pain. But even with slight pain, Aelanthus can help as well. Low lingering, low grade fevers and lot of, lot of, lot of debility. That is about your Aelanthus.